Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are doing well. The purpose of this video is to give you some instruction on the assignment that you have today so that you don't get lost or confused. But of course, if you do, feel free to contact me. We've been talking about genetics, and so now we're going to use what we've learned about genetics to create a baby on paper. So you're going to go to your Canvas page, you're going to click on Modules. Hopefully this module is still at the top. If not, you'll need to find it. So it sells to genetics, and then we're going to go down to the Create a Baby Lab. When you click on this, you're going to have three links, including this video, which will be here. Uh, so we're going to click on the assignment sheet. And this is what you're actually going to fill out to get your grade. Um, so you're going to go to file, make a copy, and that's going to give you a document that you can edit. OK, now to fill this out, I'm going to need the other link that was on our Canvas page. So I have my instructions and then I've got some concluding questions. Make sure you go back and answer these concluding questions at the end of your lab. Uh, the only one of these definitions you're not going to find in your genetics PowerPoint is locus. Locus sounds like location. Uh, this is the location of a gene on a chromosome. It's where you would find it in the genome. On the next page, you've got this chart that you're going to fill in. And in order to fill that chart in, we're going to need this link. So this is your assignment, um, but I've turned it into a document that you can edit. Um, so if you go down to the bottom, you're going to have this big chart with all these different traits in it. And this is going to be how you determine the phenotype of your child or what it's going to look like. So when I go back to my Create a Baby lab, I'm going to be flipping coins to determine what alleles is going to go into the child. Now, why flip a coin? Why not just say, okay, well, I want my kid to have a round head, so I'm going to say it's got the alleles for round. Well, that's not how things really work, is it? When eggs and sperm are made, the person making that egg or sperm can't decide which of their alleles goes into which gamete. And when an egg is fertilized by a sperm, there's no clue of what's in that egg or sperm uh, to create that child. So flipping the coin is designed to make this random. Now I do have two sides to my coin. I have heads and I have tails. And I have that for every one of my alleles. So I, this represents your parent alleles. And since there are two sides to it and two different alleles for every gene in this parent, what genotype would the parent have? Hopefully you're thinking heterozygous. So the parent is heterozygous for every gene because they have uh, both of them, okay? So when I go to my baby lab, the first thing I'm asked to do is figure out the sex of the child. Well, remember we have two sex chromosomes, X and Y. And a girl is going to have two X's and a boy is going to have an X and a Y. So mom has no choice but to donate an X allele. It's all she's got. So she's going to donate this X chromosome to the child. And that's why the allele for mom has already been filled out as an X. She has no other choice there. Now we are going to have to flip our coin to find the allele from dad and determine which of our uh, genders this baby is going to be. Now, why? is going to dominate over X. If you have a Y chromosome, you're going to show the boy's traits. So I've picked heads to be dominant and tails to be recessive. So I'm going to flip my coin and I got heads. So that means I have a Y here and my genotype, I'm going to put those together. So I have X, Y and my phenotype would be a boy. Now you go ahead and pause and figure out what your child is going to be. If you get a tail, then this will be an X and your genotype will be XX and be a girl. So pause and do that. Okay, hopefully you did that. So now we're going to um, go through these other traits. Well, I'm going to look at my chart first to see what letters I'm using. And I'm looking at face shape first, so I've got R's. Now I'm going to flip my coin. And remember, heads is dominant, tails is recessive. So I flip to get mom's allele, and I got tails. So I'm going to give mom a recessive allele, a little r. And I'm going to flip again to get dad's allele. And I got heads, so dad's going to have a big R. Okay, remember, big is dominant, little is recessive. So I've got big R, little r as my genotype. And I need to go back to this chart to determine the phenotype. And since I had big R, little r, my phenotype is going to be round. So I would type round here. For chin shape, I'm using ends. So I'm going to flip my coin to get mom's allele. And I got tails, so it's a little in. And I'm going to flip my coin to get dad's allele. And I got heads, which is a big in. So I'm going to go to my genotype. I've got big in, little in. 
And to figure out the phenotype, I need to go to this chart. And big N, little n tells me I have a noticeable chin. Whoops. All right, so what I want you to do is flip your coin uh, twice for each gene to figure out your traits all the way down to um, hair curliness. When you get to hair curliness, I want you to stop and um, come back to this video. So pause, figure out these traits, and then come back to me when you get to hair curliness. Okay, hopefully you did that, and now you are at hair curliness. So when I look at this sheet, notice that my first traits, the ones you've already found, had two phenotypes. It was either round or square, noticeable or less noticeable. There were two forms of all of these traits. But when you get down to hair curliness, there are three forms of these traits. So these top ones that you've already done represent your dominant and recessive alleles. And these at the bottom are going to represent things that could be incompletely or codominant. Now, when we're flipping our coin, we're going to use heads to represent a one and tails to represent a two. So I'm using C1s and C2s for hair curliness. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to flip to get mom's allele. I got heads, so I got C1. And now I flip to get dads and I got heads again, so I have C1 again. Uh, so my genotype is C1, C1, and my phenotype is going to be curly. So this kid is going to have curly hair, okay? And then I would do eyebrow color. So for eyebrow color, I'm using D1s and 2s. So I'm going to flip once to get mom's allele and its heads, so I get D1. And then I flip to get dad's alleles. Whoops and I got tails, so that one will be D2. My genotype is D1, D2, and I'm gonna go back here to see that I have uh, eyebrow color that is the same as my hair. So here I'm gonna put same as hair, okay? So now make sure that you are flipping to get your own traits from hair curliness to skin tone. So pause the video, flip your coin, figure out your traits for the rest of this chart, and then come back to me and we'll figure out hair and eye color together. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. When I look at my trait chart for hair and eye color, notice that I have two genes with two alleles each for hair color and the same for eye color. I have two uh, alleles and I have two genes. Okay, so I'm gonna need to flip my coin twice to get my A alleles and then twice again to get my B alleles. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna flip for my number one allele first. And I got a head, so that's a capital A, a dominant allele. And then I'm gonna flip to get my other number one allele from dad. And I got heads again, so I've got a big A there. Now I'm gonna go back to get my second allele, my B allele, so I'm gonna flip to get moms. And I got tails, so that's a little b. And I'm going to flip to get dads. And it's heads, so that's going to give me a big b. When I'm writing in my genotype, I'm going to put my a alleles together that I got from mom and dad. And then I'm going to put my b alleles together that I got from mom and dad. Um, so that's my genotype. You have some spaces there with a the slash. Feel free to delete those and just type in your genotype. To get the phenotype, I'm going to go back to this chart. And I had... Uh, big A, big A, big B, little B, so my kid is going to have black hair. And in order to get the eye color, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip once to get mom's number one and again to get dad's number one. And then you're going to flip to get mom's number two and get dad's number two. Okay, your genotype, you're putting together the A's, the number ones, and you're putting together the number twos, which are the B's, and then you will find your phenotype on this trait chart, okay? Now, once you finish with this, you need to draw your baby and color it, whatever things need color. It is a baby, it is not an adult. It does not have tattoos or piercings or anything like that, okay? You're drawing a portrait for a baby. Once you finish, I want you to take your baby's picture and I want you to paste that here. Don't forget to name your baby and then don't forget to answer these conclusion questions and you'll be done with this assignment and hopefully this will be a fun one for you uh, with genetics. So thanks guys. Have fun. Can't wait to see your children.